Bon dia to the bon. In the spirit of the 2014 World Cup, good morning. How are you in Portuguese? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. In Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. As you know, in the spirit of the world's biggest soccer tournament that's going on right now, congratulations to all of you because you've scored a goal. Just like the world's best soccer players are right now competing for the infamous World Cup, and they've practiced over and over and over again for the last several years to compete for the World Cup, you're here to practice and learn some very effective public speaking skills. Before I have the privilege of introducing your guest speaker, my personal uh, public speaking coach and mentor, a few housekeeping items. You have two sides to your handout. Everyone should have a handout. Anyone not have this handout? Great. We'll give one to you right here. One side is for actually taking notes, and that's this first side right here. On the back of this handout is a side for your homework. Okay? The good news is you're actually going to be giving the answers to the homework questions through this presentation. So you're certainly going to want to pay attention. If you've ever wanted to improve your speeches but didn't know how, you're not alone. Our next speaker also struggled for years with how to become an effective speaker. With the advice of his mentor, he learned about the three phases of, speech, of a speech and how to use these phases to improve his speeches. Today, you will learn how to use and apply these three phases of speech to improve your speeches. Discover the secrets of fantastic speeches from our next speaker, distinguished Toastmaster, Mr. Tim Wilson. When you saw the educational session, you might have wondered, Tim, what are these phases you're talking about? What makes them so fantastic? How do you come up with this idea in the first place? Well, it started with Toastmasters contests. You familiar with Toastmasters contests? Yeah. You know how they work? Yes. Okay. If you want, you know Toastmasters? Okay. One, two, okay. Three. Three people here. Okay, good. If you're new to Toastmasters contests, here's how they work. Rudy, pay attention. It's just, this is for you. Pay attention. Okay. <laughs> Toastmasters contests started out at the club level. When does the club go to the area level? When do the areas go to the division level? The division go to the district level. And happen to have a district champion here, Rudy Segovia. So, good job, Rudy. <laughs> but here was the thing. I took a look at the people who were clearly better than the other speakers. You know the people I'm talking about? You just look at them and you're going through the contest and you're thinking, that guy. They may win or not, but you're that's clearly better. That, that guy is clearly better. You have that experience? Yeah. But here was the weird thing. I kept looking at Toastmasters manuals. I thought, I don't understand why they're better. I couldn't get it. I looked through you know, the CC manual and I thought, it, vocal variety, check. Gesture, OK. Everybody's doing the same thing, but some people clearly were better. And I just didn't get it. So I got really confused. I said, what makes them better? Why are they better? What's, what's their secret? And finally I got so confused, I had to go to my mentor, Bob. Do you have a mentor, somebody you go to for advice, questions? Yes. Yeah, see, that's me, right? So, OK. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else got a mentor? If you do, you know you go to that person for help. Now, for me, I go to Bob. Now, Bob's a medium height guy, blonde hair. Been in Toastmasters forever. More importantly, he's a professional speaker. So he knows what he's talking about. So I go over to Bob. I say, Bob, I'm confused. I don't understand what's going on. Why is it some people are better than others? So, well, Tim, that's because you don't understand about the three phases of the speech. Bob, I've been in Toastmasters for a while now. So I think I know about the three phases of the speech. Introduction, body, conclusion. Right? <laughs> no, Tim. In fact, that's only one phase of the speech. You have to understand all three if you're going to get better. 
Okay, Bob, what are these fantastic phases you're talking about? And Bob told me. And it transformed my speaking. I started just doing things differently. It was like, like spring cleaning for my speeches. You know what spring cleaning is? You know what it is, okay. If you don't know what spring cleaning is, just where you throw out all the stuff you don't need anymore. It was like that with my speeches. I started doing things different. And I got different results. Won a couple contests. Later on, I could help other people win contests. Still later, I created the Public Speaking Library blog. There's a sign-up sheet going around if you didn't get it. If you want to have sent to your email every day, a tip on public speaking, sign up on the sheet going around. If you do not want an email tip on public speaking, send your email every day, do not sign up. <laughs> and the tips you find in there have all the stew, the three phases of speech. Most recently become a professional speaking coach, helping anybody get from wherever they are to wherever they want to be. If you have questions about how effective it is, you can always ask Caesar I'm coaching right now. And today, you're going to learn about those three phases. You're going to find out about it. Take your speaking for wherever it is to wherever you want it to be. You're going to learn tools, tips, tricks, techniques you can use from now to the end of your speaking career. Far, far, far down the road. Right? And you'll discover how to be that better speaker you want it to be. Start out first by talking about the first phase of the speech. The first phase of the speech most people get but don't fully understand the importance of it. Then the second phase, which people naturally focus on. You're probably already aware of. You're in Toast, who's in Toastmasters? Okay, three, all right, good, good. You probably work in the second phase now. Then the third phase, most speakers don't get about. Don't understand. Once you understand the third phase of the speech, then you really transform yourself as a speaker. But before you get the third phase, you've got to start with the first phase speak. Now the first phase of the speech is something that you probably don't think that much about. Many speakers don't. And because of that, they get stuck before they even start. You had that happen? You ever get stuck? Tim? Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Three. That's good. That's good. Rudy? Challenge for you? Okay. But that's why that first phase is so important. It's such a big deal. But once you understand that first phase and how it works, then you start to really build, develop, and grow your speaking skills. You get a little more confident up there. Let's face it, probably confidence is something you wanted to get out of Toastmasters, right? Mm -hmm. You start to get that confidence. And then when you get that confidence, you discover you're a little more relaxed, a little more comfortable. Things just go more smoothly, easily, more comfortably because you're using that first phase. And then when that happens, you start to enjoy being up there. You're looking at me in disbelief, but yes, you can enjoy being up there on stage. And the first phase of the speech is content. First phase is content. First phase is content. content. Thank you. Very good. Great oral exam results. <laughs> Called 100%. Content. And now you're looking at me like, Tim. Content? I'm sweltering in this hot room because you're going to tell me the most important thing you can do is content. Well, Tim, let me tell you a thing or two. Content's no big deal. You can talk about anything you want. You can talk about trees or fleas or knees or silent ease. Doesn't matter. Talk about anything you want. You are right. You are so right. And little out. So you are cranking speech after speech after speech. You just keep on doing it. If you've got so many speeches, you've got to go from club to club to club. What can I do, Rudy? <laughs> keep on doing it. Got a guy back at my home club, Prez. Ken, excuse me. Prez is in my home club, too, but Ken. And Ken said one day to me, Tim, I've got so many speeches, I can literally give a speech every single week this club meets, and our club meets every week. So if you're a Ken, keep on cranking those speeches out there. Keep on cracking them out. But maybe you find out that you 
hit the wall. You hit the wall. You're thinking, I don't know what to talk about. I got better things to do than speaking anyway. I got a job and family and dogs and cats and uncles and aunts. I got a whole life to take care of. I can't be speaking all the time. If you hit the wall, you're just like me. Because not too long ago, I hit that wall hard. Got so bad, finally I had to go to boxing. Bob, I'm thinking of quitting Toastmasters. Because it's a waste of my time to go up there and talk about something they don't care about. And then I don't care about it either. Why am I bothering? Tim, that's because you don't understand content, the importance of content. Tim, it's all about your passion. Find your passion, find your speech. Find your passion, find your speech. If you're talking about something you're excited about, interested in, it's no problem to talk. It's easy, it's simple. That's what he said. Find your passion, find your speech. Find your passion, find your speech. Find your passion, find, find your speech. speech. Find your speech, exactly. Now maybe you're thinking, Tim, what are you talking about passion? What does this passion thing mean to anyone? I wanted the same thing. Bob, what are you talking about passion? What do you mean, passion? What is this? And he explained it. He explained it in such a way that I got it. It really helped me a lot. Maybe it'll help you. Imagine you're at a party. You do go to parties, some of you know what a party is. Okay. Imagine you're at a party, and people are talking about all sorts of things, and then suddenly somebody talks about something you like. You really like talking about that subject. So you start talking about it. Pretty soon other people come in, they're talking about it too. You're all talking about the subject, it's great, and then it kind of breaks apart. You know how it does? Yeah. You still want to talk about that subject. <laughs> so you wander around the party finding anybody who will talk to you about that subject. Party goes on for hours, you're having a great time. Then it starts dying down. People are leaving, going out to their cars. You follow them out to their cars, still talking about that subject. They're getting into their cars, you're talking to them about that subject. Finally, they're driving away, and as they're driving away, you're yelling your last thoughts on that subject because you still really want to talk about that subject. Whatever subject you're now thinking of, that's what you should talk about. Home Club Extreme Toastmaster has got a tall guy there, named John. And John likes flea markets. You know what a flea market is? Okay. <laughs> You know what a flea market is? Just a place you get things really cheap. So John said, what did this flea market the other day? This guy had this thing, was a silver thing, really valuable, but he didn't know what he had. So I just kept bargaining down and down and down, and finally just ripped that guy off. It was great. <laughs> then I wanted to get money for it, so on eBay. And the way you get the best deal on eBay is flea markets. Find your passion, find your speech for John's flea markets. Another guy named Josh. Josh's kind of a big guy. Got blondish hair. He likes to talk about beef ribs. <laughs> Apologies if you're a vegetarian. But that's what he likes to talk about, beef ribs. He'll say, went in the locker the other day. You don't know what a locker is. It's like a big walk-in freezer place. Butcher guy came and we said, Josh, here's the way you get the best deal in the beef ribs. It's like here on the cow, pretty much. You slice this off and then beef ribs. Find your passion, find your speech. For Josh, that's being ripped. And finally, Marilyn. Marilyn's a retired lady, and she likes to talk about tapping. If you don't know what tapping is, tapping is where you tap lightly on your face. My problem is I confuse tapping with slapping, and I get a headache when I do it. But she does it right. She's like, I was at this tapping session with my client. client asked, Marilyn, how do you do tapping? So, well, check my blog, check my video. Tapping. Find your passion, find your speech. From Marilyn, that's tapping. Now, maybe, about now you're thinking, Tim, I know what it is. I know what my passion is. If so, great. Just write it down. 
Take a look at that homework sheet. The missing word is passion. Write down what your passion is. Write down all the things you can think about that relate directly to that passion. Or maybe you're thinking, Tim, I got no clue what my passion is. That's all right. I had the same reaction. Back when Bob said to me, Tim, find your passion, find your speeches. Bob, I don't know what my passion is. I said, Tim, don't worry. Ask a friend. Get a passion pal. Just ask, what do I like to talk about? So do that. Go to your friend, your buddy, somebody you know, a passion pal. Go up and say, what do I like to talk about? And the reaction will probably be, but after you convince them you're serious, I'll probably say something like, you know what you want to talk about, because it's what you're always talking about. So don't worry. If you don't know your passion, your friends do. Once you find that passion, you'll discover it's easy to get on stage. I mean, forget about research your topic. You know that topic. You love that topic. You've got a passion about it, excitement about it. It's easy to get on the stage. You get confident when you get up there. You take charge of that stage. And then you relax. Is it more comfortable talking about something you know something about? You ever had that happen? Somebody asks you about something you know something about, you think, hey, I got this covered. No problem. Just keep on going. Yeah, exactly. And when you get that confidence, that relax, you realize quickly and efficiently you start cranking out those speeches. Any blocks you had, any stops, no problem, just blow right past them. Because now you're talking about something you like, your passion. If you were here for Jerry's session, talked about the importance of passion in overcoming fear. Your passion about you, nothing can stop you. So you find your passion, you find your speed. Simple process. Write down your passion, write down all the things you can talk about related to that passion, and then you're ready to go. If you don't know your passion is, get a passion pal, ask a friend, what do I like to talk about? That's the first phase of content. Now, once you go through that first phase of content, you come to the second phase, you probably already focused on it. If you're reading the Toastmaster manual, if you're going through basic speaking courses, if you're studying books and speaking, they tend to talk about the second phase. They really don't talk too much about content. That's kind of up to you. They don't talk about the third phase, but they really focus on that second phase. The thing is, there's a problem. There's a basic problem with the second phase. And until you overcome that, again, you stop and you just don't go any further. But when you overcome that problem, you get better. That's when the, really the confidence takes in. That's when you start to get out of Toastmasters what you'd hope you'd want to get out of Toastmasters. Because you've overcome that problem. You're confident, certain of yourself, you relax more, you're relaxed more comfortable. You finally get some of that ease. You want it. Sure, you're passionate about your topic, but it's that second phase people have such a big challenge. And then things become a problem. And the second phase is delivery. Second phase is delivery. Second phase is delivery. 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 Exactly. Now, delivery is everything you do on stage to get the message out. Everything you do on stage to get the message out, that's delivery. And one of the greatest tools you have for getting that message out is the competent communication manual. Have you heard of this? Yes. Know what yes. this is? Okay. If you've been in Toastmasters for a while, probably you know the competent communication manual, because it's the first manual you get when you join Toastmasters. If you have been in Toastmasters for a while and you have no clue, what a competent communication manual is, check your mail. There may be a surprise there waiting for you. The competent communication manual. And as you may know, competent communication manual is all about delivery tools. It's the greatest ever. You start about just talking. You build all the way up to inspiring your audience. And along the way, you learn things like vocal variety, getting point, gestures, really wonderful stuff. So common communication manual is a fantastic way to get better at delivery. Once you overcome the problem. Now, I wasn't aware of the problem at the beginning. Didn't really know about it. Until Bob explained it to me. Once he explained it to me, I got it. I realized that's, that's a big problem. 
It's a huge problem every speaker has. Here's the way he talked about it. So for every speech you give, there are three speeches. For every speech you give, there are three speeches. The first speech is the speech you plan to give. The speech you plan to give. That's a speech in your head. You've been thinking about it over and over for a year, or a month, or a week, or a day, or a minute, or a second. Sometime in your head, there's a speech in your head, right? You're planning to give it. Okay, speech you're planning to give. The second speech is the speech you thought you gave. The speech you thought you gave. That's the speech that goes shooting in your head the moment you step off the stage. Step off the stage and boom, ah, I know what I did. Okay, I think it this, I probably did this, a little more vocal variety there. Okay, you know what we have to work on? That's great feedback, great. The third speech is the speech you actually gave. The speech you actually gave. That's the speech the audience heard, the speech the evaluator heard. As you know, Toastmasters, every speech is evaluated. But here's the problem. You only know two of those three speeches. You know the speech you plan to give. You've been working on it. Is there something in your head before you go out there, hopefully? So you got some idea what you're going to be doing. You know the speech that you thought you gave. Because it's so clear in your head, you can just almost touch it. You get off the stage and I know I did this, I know I did that. The problem is you have no clue about the speech you actually gave. That's why you're amazed to hear from your evaluator that through your entire speech, you're doing the chicken dance. <laughs> and you're thinking, I was not doing the chicken dance. Yes, you were. No, you didn't know about it. Well, when Bob explained this to me, I was a little horrified. I said, Bob, what do I do? I mean, if I don't know what I'm doing on stage, I have no clue about it, how do I get better as a speaker? But Tim, don't worry. The answer is video. If you can see it, you can be it. It's all about video. Simple. <clears throat> now you're looking at me like, Tim, there is no way I ever want to look at that video. <laughs> and I had the same reaction. Back when Bob said, Tim, you can see it, you can be it. I said, Bob, you see it, you be it, because I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> he said, Tim, the audience had to sit through it. <laughs> you should have to sit through it. He's right. But it did help me and give me a way to look at the video that wasn't directly looking at the video all at once. Because it can be overwhelming, right? You look at the video, it's like, ah, I don't see that. So you kind of step into it gradually. It's easier, it's simpler, it just goes a lot better. So here's the thing. First time to the video, voice only. First time to the video, voice only. First time to the video, voice, voice only. only. Voice only, exactly. Just listen to it. That's not too painful, right? Just to hear it, okay? Just listen to it and hear what word choices you make. And if you don't like them, Call up Prez because he's got some real good ideas about words and which words to use. He's been to his presentation. Just notice which words are repeated, how's the vocal variety, how are the pauses, are you talking too fast if you don't understand? You need to slow things down. Just voice on. Second time through. Thank you. No, it's all right. Video only. Definitely video only. Second time through. Video only. Good, acapella is nice, I like that. <laughs> Video only, just watch. World champion David Brooks described himself looking at the video and he looked like a caged tiger pacing back and forth in front of the audience. You don't want to go there. You don't want that effect. So, video only. And start seeing things like gestures. How are the gestures working out? Are they good? Are you just kind of doing this up there the whole time? And can you guess what those gestures mean? What does this gesture mean? 
Finally, both. Both voice and video. Voice and video. Third time through, do it with? Voice, voice and video. video. Thank you. See, there's a magic in threes. But I do appreciate your contribution there. Voice and video, put the whole thing together. Did the gestures match what you were doing? Did it make sense? And if you had a story and it took place in different locations, are you standing in a different location on stage for each point in your story? Voice and video. Put the whole thing together. And if you do that, you will find out maybe for the first time ever what you actually did on stage. And believe me, the first time it will be horrifying. <laughs> it's all right. It's a process to go through the process. But at least you will know. And as you continue to do this, you'll get better and better at it because you'll know when you get off the stage that picture comes in your mind will pretty closely match what you actually did. You can dance for <laughs> Pretty much match what you actually did out there. But if you really want to get good, you can use the homework here. The missing word is delivery. Delivery is the missing word there in the back in the homework set. So just write down all the delivery tools you can think about. You can use the competent communication manual, write down vocal variety, gestures, organization, beginning, middle, end, that's also a delivery tool. Getting to the point, persuade the power, all those delivery tools, write them all down, and then go through the video three times. And just ask, good? Or could it be better? Go through vocal variety. Is a vocal variety solid? Are you thinking? Not so much. Go through gestures. Are gestures wonderful or eh, could use a little tweaking here and there? Just do that. And if you do that, maybe for the first time ever, you'll know how you're actually doing in delivery. And once you understand what you're doing in delivery, then you get the full value out of your Toastmasters experience. The great thing today is you can get all sorts of video. Your camera can video, your phone can video. I think your car probably can video too, <laughs> that you're going to come out with. Video everywhere. You just have to use it. It's terrifying at first, but go through it three different ways, you'll become better. And once you know what you're doing on stage, you get more confident, right? Once you know, hey, that's what I did, and you can be more certain what you're doing. And you relax, you calm down. If you were at Jerry's session, you know that breathing exercise. Once you relax enough, you can do them on stage too, to calm yourself down. And when you do that quickly, efficiently, you get better. It's a simple process. Competent communication manual. And then video. Voice only, video only, voice and video. When you do that, write down all the delivery tools, check them off as to which ones you need work on. Make sense? That is the second phase of delivery. Now, about this point, I was doing a lot of thinking as Bob was explaining all this stuff to me. It just started going from my head. So I mean, wait, wait a minute, Bob. I'm, I'm getting confused because you say there are three phases, right? There are three phases. And the first phase is content. What I'm going to say. Find your passion, find your speech, find your passion, your passion, pal. That's what I like to talk about. Great. Second phase is delivery. Everything you do on stage, you get the message out, voice only, video only, voice to video. Delivery tools, wonderful. But here's my problem. You're talking about three phases, but the first phase is what I'm going to say. Second phase is what I am saying. How can there be a third phase? I mean, it's just all there is. What I'm going to say, me on stage saying it. That's it, right? No, Tim. There is a third phase. But not surprising you don't get it. Because most people don't know what the third phase is. Most speakers don't know what the third phase is. But on second thought, it's a little surprising most speakers don't know about the third phase. Because the answer to, what is the third phase, is right in front of their face. Bob, I don't, I don't get it. What's right in front of my face that I'm not paying any attention to? 
Bob told me. And he was right, he was right in front of my face, and I paid no attention to it whatsoever. Tim, the third phase is audience. Audience. And audience is all about creating a connection. Creating a connection. You create a connection by using the you. Using the you. So the third phase is audience. Third phase is audience. Third phase is audience. audience. The magic of three. An audience is all about creating a connection. Creating a connection. Creating a connection. Connection, exactly. Now maybe you're thinking, Tim, what's the big deal about audience and creating a connection? Why is it so difficult? I mean, you're in front of the audience. There wasn't this automatic connection there anyway. I mean, you're in front of the audience, they're in front of you. You're connected, right? I got a little confused. Here's the way Bob explained it to me. He said, most speakers, most Toastmasters, they start out speaking. Start out thinking, what should I talk about? Right? Did you do that? If you did an icebreaker, what do I talk about? So now you know, if you're passionate about something, you find your passion, find your speech. So you talk about something you're excited about, right? You're excited about, you're interested in, you really want to share. So you give that speech. You're excited about, interested, really want to share, get it across. The speech goes okay. Second speech is called organize your speech. So you take a look at the Cobb Communication Manual. Good stuff in organization. Nothing about what to talk about. So you think, well, talk about myself here, I'll just do it again. And you talk about things that matter to you, things that are important to you, things you care about, things you're passionate about. And that goes okay. And you get to the third speech. You can see where I'm going here probably already. Right? Called getting to the point. You look through the manual. Great things about getting to the point, right? Yeah. Nothing about what to talk about. This time you figure, I've been talking about myself all along. I'll just keep on talking about myself, right? And your speakers become the me show. Pay attention to me. Look at me. Here I am up here. I'm so wonderful. Hey, it's all about me. And you become really good about talking about yourself, about things that interest you, things that are important to you, things you care about. But something else happens. The better you get about talking about yourself, the better you get at ignoring your audience. Something else happens. The better you get at ignoring your audience, the better your audience gets at ignoring you. And so pretty soon, it's like there's this wall between you. You're all, me, 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 it's all about me. And the audience is thinking, who is that blowhard? What the heck are they doing? And let me check out my iPhone. I got uh, things to do. What's on the iPad here? Oh, New York Times. Cool. Great. Have you had that happen as a speaker where you feel you're just not connecting with the audience? Have you had it happen in the audience where you think, this speaker just doesn't get me? Yeah? Just don't care. I don't care about them. They don't care about me. To break down that barrier, use the you. Have you ever, did you ever, could you ever use the you? Create that connection with your audience. Well, maybe now you're thinking, Tim, all right, fine, I'm going to use the you. Or maybe you're thinking, Tim, I'm still a little confused about how this disconnection works. Okay, think of it this way. What's the one word most speakers love to use one letter? And it's a vowel. I. I. Exactly. A vowel. U technically is a vowel, but Y-O-U is not a vowel. We'll go to spelling <laughs> later. I. Exactly. I. What's the word? Almost like I. Figures love to use two letters. First letter, W. We. We. Right. Have you heard these speeches? We went into this. We went into that. We all know that's wrong. Have you ever thought, I don't know what we all want to do? I don't care, it doesn't matter to me, don't forget. No, I don't care. No. Instead, use the you. 
have you ever, did you ever, could you ever, have you ever thought about? Use the you, create a connection with your audience. Well, maybe now you're thinking, Tim, okay, okay already, I'm gonna use the you. Or you might be thinking, Tim, I don't want to use the you. I like talking about myself. <laughs> My friends say I'm fascinating. <laughs> All right. If you don't use the you, you don't create a connection with the audience, a barrier goes up between you and the audience, and pretty soon it's like you're standing all in the audience talking to yourself on stage. Maybe that's your ideal for some people. But if you want to be connected with the audience, they care, they manage, they do things afterwards. Use the you. You discover a huge, huge difference. Have you ever, did you ever, could you ever? Find ways to use the you. When you do that, you'll get confident on stage. You're more certain of what you're doing. More powerfully aware because the magic thing will happen. The audience will start to get their energy, will start, hey, he's talking to me. And when they talk to you, you talk back, right? There's conversation going on. And you feel that connection. You start to surf on the waves, the audience excitement, the audience interest, and you start feeling like, I feel pretty good up here, yeah. It's a great feeling. When that happens, you relax, you have fun, the audience has fun, you have fun. Everything all kind of just comes together. And it's a simple process. All you have to do is start using the word you. When you do have a bunch of eyes and wheeze in your speech, no problem. Just sprinkle in a few you's. Take care of it right there. And that's the third phase of audience. All right, let's wrap things up. For all the things that you've learned today about how to become a better speaker. The first phase is content. The first phase is content. The first phase is content. content, right. Content's so important because content's where you get started. Without any content, you got nothing to say, right? You can't do anything. So content's a challenge for many speakers, but it doesn't need to be a challenge because in you, you've got something that you want to talk about. Secretly, there's something in you you've always wanted to talk about, you've always wanted to communicate with, you may not be aware of it, but it's there. That's part of the reason why you're in Toastmasters, because you have a voice, and your voice wants to be heard, and you want others to hear your voice. Content. So it's simple. Find your passion, find your speech. Find your passion, find your speech. Find your passion, find your speech. Find your speech. Find your speech. It's that simple. Go into the things you're excited about. Record yourself sometimes at a party. Find out what you're doing. Discover. Notice it. That's your passion. Once you tap into that, once you get that passion, then speaking just comes naturally. Everything just naturally flows out of that passion. And it's just a really great experience. Challenge your courses. Well, you know what your passion is, write it down. Go back, do the homework, write it down. Write down all the things you can talk about related to that passion. You may have 10, 15 different speaking topics. Heck, one topic may turn into five or 10 different speeches. You can do a speech and break it up into segments and just do part one, part two, part three. Find your passion, your speaking just takes care of itself. But if you're thinking, I don't know what to talk about. I got no clue, I have no idea. Don't work. Because your friends, all you have to do is find a person you know, a person you will acquaint ask, what do I like to talk about? And they'll tell you. And you'll know that. So if you don't know what your passion is, your friends do. When you get that passion topic that you're really excited about, really interested in talking about, then it's a lot easier to start the process of speaking. So I usually get up. So if you've never been speaking or if you haven't given a speech yet, perfect opportunity. Get up there, talk about something you're passionate about, something you're excited about. Then you start to get a little bit over that nerves, a little bit over that uncomfortableness, a little bit easier up there. It's a simple process that will make you a much better speaker. The second phase is delivery. The second phase is delivery. The second phase is delivery. delivery. Ah, thank you for waiting. Delivery. Delivery is everything you do on stage to get the message out. 
everything you do on stage to get the message out. That's what delivery is. And the greatest thing is, is that you're right now working on delivery. Probably you're focused almost entirely, if not entirely, on delivery. Because that's Toastmasters. But Toastmasters is a great tool to help you do it, to help make it happen. And that's the Cobbett Communication Manual. Because the Cobbett Communication Manual, when you use it, you start going through all those tools, all those tricks it has in there. There's a lot of information in there. It really is a very rich toolbox for you to help you become better, develop, and build your speaking skills. The Cobbett Communication Manual is wonderful. It'll step you through vocal variety, gestures, getting to the point. You'll build up to inspire the audience as you use these different delivery tools. But you've got to overcome a problem. And that problem is simply that you don't know what you're doing on stage. You don't know. You've got no clue what you're actually doing up here on stage. And because of that, when you go down your seat, you have a picture in your head of what you thought you did, it's not really accurate. It's not really what happened. And that's a problem. To overcome that problem is video. Video. If you can see it, you can be it. The thing about video is you want to go through video three different ways. Three different ways. First time in video, you do it voice only. First time through voice only. First time through voice, voice only. only. Voice only. Right. Listen to it. Or if you want, you can just get a pocket recorder, a digital recorder. Record it that way. If you do that, you're going to hear things that surprise you. Some of it may shock you, some may horrify you. But at least you'll know the truth, you'll know the reality of what you're actually doing up there. The evaluator's great, they've got their own opinion, but you have your own opinion, and ultimately what matters is how you're happy with what you're doing up there. So voice only, just hear it. Listen for things like, how are the pauses? How is the vocal variety? How smoothly does the voice go along? Is it a pitch voice or a low pitch voice? If you're doing different voices, how effective are they? How do they all be work? That's voice only. And second time through, go visual only. Second time through, visual only. Second time through, visual only. Visual only, right? Watch it. And now that you've heard it, it shouldn't be such a big deal to watch it. And when you watch it, start watching for things like gestures, of course, comes to mind. Can you tell what the gestures mean? You can even play a game with your friends. Ask your friends by say, hey, watch this. What do you think I'm doing there? And then take bets. And just see. Does it match what you're trying to do? How much are you just moving your hands around? How much are you really using gestures effectively? How much do you have your hands up too much, blocking the audience? Keep your hands down and open yourself up to your audience. Gesture. And just watching yourself, how smooth are you on stage? You watch, walk back and forth. Do you look like a tiger pacing back and forth? Or is it smooth than that? It's more relaxed than that. And then finally, third time through, voice and visual. Third time through, voice and visual. Third time through, voice and visual. Voice and visual, right. Put the whole thing together. Exactly as you said. Put the whole thing together and see how the whole thing goes. Simple thing to do is just take a look at the gestures. Did the gestures match what you were doing? Did it make sense? Was it over gesturing? Did everything kind of hook up? If you're telling a story in different places, you have different places on stage for each place in your story. Put the whole thing together and just see how it all really impacts, really works up there. And when you do that, maybe for the first time ever, you'll know what you're doing on stage. And once you know what you're doing on stage, then you finally have a place to start. You can start getting better once you know what you're doing on stage. And to really make it happen, to really make those delivery tools take off, just write down every delivery tool you can think of. CC manual is a great way to start, the common communication manual, but you can also go into workbooks. Take a look at some of the other delivery tools that they talk about in those workbooks. Go on to Amazon, they've got a free, you can get for free, certain beginning parts of speech books. Take a look through those. Just write down every delivery tool you can think of and then simply go through your video and just ask yourself, is it a strength or can I make some improvement on this? And then when you go through it, you say, okay, great, 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 then find it, then work on the things that need improvement. That's how you're going to improve faster. 
Not by working the things you're already good at, work on the things that are, that are on the side. Your strengths are always going to be there. They're there. It's good to know what they are. Mm -hmm. But develop and build yourself. You get confidence from your strengths. You build yourself by growing those areas for improvement. And once you know what they are, you get that. Second phase of delivery. And the third phase is audience. Third phase is audience. audience. Third phase is audience. audience. It's got to be three. Third phase is audience. Audience is a challenge for most speakers. Because amazingly enough, most speakers talk to an audience, right? Most speakers in front of an audience. Most speakers pay no attention to their audience. It's all about, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. And you're saying, OK, fine, fine, hurry it up. It's my turn to talk about what I'm doing, and I'm doing. And the other speakers say, hey, then hurry it up, and I'm going to talk about what I'm doing. And no one's paying attention there because you're not involved. You're not being brought in. Audience is so powerful because audience is all about creating a connection. Creating a connection. connection, exactly. Creating a connection is so important to, with your audience. Because if you're up there, you've only got that one shot. That's really it. Now you can go over and over your speech, but every time you do your speech, it'll be different. Every time you do your speech, probably you'll have a different audience. It'll be a different experience. If you're in Toastmasters clubs and all about yours, it might kind of changes from moment to moment, like the tides in the mood, it just kind of changes, you get different people in. So you get that one chance to make that connection with that audience at that time. You want to create that connection, use that opportunity to make that happen. Because it's a powerful thing when you create that connection. You're going to feel that, well, think of a love connection. Not saying you should go out and start hugging everyone in your audience, not saying that. Well, if you feel like you want to do that, that's fine. But just saying, you create that connection with the audience, it's a powerful thing, it's a strong thing, and finally your message starts getting across. One of the simplest ways to create that connection is to use the you. Use the you. 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 Exactly. Use the you. The word you is magical. The word you is personal. When you hear the word we, it's eh, not me, it's somebody else. But what you is personal. You know, if someone says to you, hey, we, I'm like, who are you talking about? You say, hey, you, oh, me. Now you know what's going on. You is a powerful, powerful word. You use the you, just start taking a look through. See if you can take out some of those we do this and we do that. Sprinkle in those yous. Figure out a way in your middle of the story to be a great story, but just step out. Have you ever had that experience? Have you ever done that? Have you ever thought about that? And then go back to your story. If you do that, you create that powerful, strong, magnetic connection with the audience by using the you. And I don't want to say that that's the only thing you can do. And that's why the third section here for your homework, that missing word is audience. Think about all the different ways you can create a connection with the audience. Using the you is one of them. There are many, many others. If you just look for them, you can ask questions. You can use the word imagine. You can use anything you can do to bring the audience in. You can talk about things the audience is going to relate to. You can talk about things that are perfect for that audience. Anything you can do to bring that audience in. So that's your homework. How, figure out different ways to create a connection with your audience. All right. I know it's a hot room, it's a steamy room, but hopefully it's been worth you sweltering through this, suffering through this enough. You have gained transformational tips that if you use them, will make you immeasurably better. No question about it. But here, of course, is a catch. You gotta use it. I hate to think you came to this room, suffered through all this experience, sweltered and suffered and sticking, oh, I hate that room, and then you leave and say, oh, well, I'm done. Don't suffer for nothing, people. <laughs> Make your suffering worthwhile. <laughs> Use some of these techniques. Use this homework page. Refer to it. Practice it. Video yourself. Close your eyes at first and open them. Go through the whole thing closed eyes. It's one way they do it too. You listen to it. You just put your video on. Close your eyes. Oh, I can hear it now. Then just mute it. And, okay, I can see it now. It's simple to do. It's powerful to do. It will transform you. All right, covered a lot of things today. Don't expect to remember everything. If you remember nothing else, just remember the three phases today. And please, one last time, repeat them for me. Content, Content. delivery, audience. We got one, two more.
one guy is this in Brazil. Thank you. One more minute before we officially adjourn this session, and I present Tim with a certificate on your behalf. Wasn't that powerful and relevant content? Yes. 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 Was that useful yes. audience-related tips? Yes. yes. And that delivery was outstanding that engaged the audience. So, excellent. So, um, uh, final housekeeping items, don't forget your homework, first and foremost. Second, there is an attendance sheet that passed around. Please don't forget to sign in, as well as sign up for Tim's useful tips. Every day, get some useful tips that you can use to help improve your public speaking skills. Sign up. I've been a, uh, a member for, for a while now, and they're great. And as well, yes. Checklist. The list should be passed around. Well, well, it's a clipboard. clipboard right here. This is for yeah. sign up. Clipboard yeah, that's around. sign up, and then the clipboard also has the list. For right behind it, there's a page for Tim's uh, oh, distribution oh, list. Oh, yeah, this is confusing. Yeah. So Here's the sign-up sheet for this. This sign-up sheet is for the for the session. So we'll keep those separate. <laughs> Wonderful. So I'm going to present Tim on your behalf. Tim, if you could come up and join me. This uh, Toastmaster certificate of appreciation is uh, hereby granted to Mr. Tim Wilson for providing you today's useful information. Tim. Thank you all.